What's going on guys? This is Burrs. I have a video here for you today talking about the Survivor Man Les Stroud Bushman Axe and it was made by Wetterlings. This is something that Wetterlings and Les Stroud have uh, come together on and created an axe that Les designed and I really like it a lot and let me get down to a few reasons why I like it. But first, let's go over the, uh, the specs of this. You have a nice leather sheath um, that you would get on all Wetterlings axes. A few downsides of that, I'll get to them later. But you will get this with it. You'll have this little uh, card that says that it's you know Les Stroud Axe, and then the normal uh, catalog and pamphlet you get with any other Wetterlings axes. The sheath here is like I said, made of leather. It's nice. It gets the job done. It keeps the blade safe. When you're coming down here to the the, uh, the blade, you have a hand forged Swedish high carbon steel um, head and. A lot of care is taken into that, and you know I know by watching a lot of videos in the past of them making them that they do get rid of ones if they're not up to their standard. So it's a very high standard for the heads that go on these axes, and um, I have no problem and uh, worries uh, with that. Then you have a nice 22-inch uh, American uh, hickory handle. It's very well done. It's it's not as curvy as you would see the handles with most of the other Wetterlings axes. And uh, there's a reason for that, and I'll get to that a little bit later. The head is a 3 and 3 8 inch head. So you have a lot of uh, cutting surface there to uh, use. The back part here has a uh, hammer. So you have a lot of you know uses for this axe, not just cutting uses, but you also have some hammering uses with that nice polished head on the back, which I used a lot when I was uh, you know, using this and testing it out. I've really come to like this axe for a new, uh, you know, number of reasons. First, let me get to some of the things I noticed when I was using it. Uh, the last time I used it, I was using it on, you know, just regular, you know, wood chopping, cutting, splitting, nothing uh, dramatic whatsoever. It never touched the ground. When I was done, I came home and I was oiling it and cleaning it. I came to find uh, this out. And I'll try to get this as well as I can. So as you can see there, the edge has bent up, and you know it's just a little bit of a ridge there. I'm not sure why that happened, but I'm going to contact Wetterlings about that because I have this and another problem with this axe. Every other Wetterlings axe I have, large hunter, I have this splitting one. Never had that problem whatsoever. Their axe heads are usually uh, indestructible, very strong, and they get the job done. Not sure why this one did that, but like I said, I'm going to contact them about that. When it comes to the head shape of this, I'm really impressed with it. It's, it's a very wedge-oriented um, head. And let me just compare this to the Large Hunter. On, the, on your right-hand side is the Bushman. Now, as you can see, it's very wedge-like compared to the Large Hunter. It's a little bit longer, as you can see, but it's very wedge-like. And that really drives down and splits wood, and it really gives you a lot um, of uh, you know, a lot of area when you're splitting wood and uh, chopping wood. This is actually a dedicated splitter on the left-hand side again, and as you'll see in this one, yet again, there's a huge wedge-like shape for this Bushman axe. And you know, in using it, you know, just the handle, the way the handle is. And when you're you're chopping and cutting, you have a lot of leverage with that non, you know, what I call wavy. You can see this one has a little bit of, you know, wave to it. This one does not at all. This one's relatively straight, um, except for when it gets down here to the bottom, and that really gives you a lot of a lot of momentum when you're going into your chopping, when you're going into your uh, splitting, and it really just gets the job done just really well. I was really impressed with, especially the chopping ability. Using this uh, large hunter's axe, which is two inches, well, it's actually about five, four to five inches shorter on the handle. Um, but, you know, leverage wise, this really gets the job done. I mean, you might be looking at 1.6 pounds for this overall. It might be a little bit on the heavy side. You know, if you're going, I don't really notice it. But anyway, it really gets the, the job done. So when we're comparing all these, you can see that the head, you know, the wedge-like shape there is definitely a good thing 
and a lot of people I've talked to about this have really said that that really helps them in their cutting. Now you have the hammer part of it, which is a nice polished uh, hammer. Um, you know, the axe really just gets the job done. You know, I've used that a few times, you know, especially with like tent stakes or stakes or, you know, anything that you're looking to do with hammering, it really gets the job done, and I really like that that's on there. The cool factor of this is definitely up there. It's a cool looking, different looking axe for sure. It really gets the job done in that department too. I mean, this looks like it means business, and it does. When it comes to the sheath though, there is a huge downside to this sheath, and I'm not sure because they were trying to get these out if they screwed up, trying to get out too fast. But, as you can see here, this comes right off. Should not be able to do that whatsoever. You should bump the camera, that's how professionals do it though. But, the problem here is, as you can see when I loop this around, the uh, it should be a little bit further back on the snap, and, and yet again, this snap really isn't that tough. With my splitting axe, I had a, one of these type uh, you know, buckles, it's never going to come off unless you redo the buckle. That's the old style. This new style with this snap, I do not like this snap at all. Um, if Wetterlings is watching this, you know, on the newer stuff, you might want to change that out. Because like I said, it does not take very much pressure at all to pop that off. And then, you know, either if you're, like I carry my sheath on my pack, you know, and all of a sudden then I'm, I lose a sheath. Just because I'm walking in the woods, I go over past a tree or something, I go in some kind of tight area and it rubs up against the, uh, the axe. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the sheath might come off. I don't like that at all, and uh, hopefully they change out the way that they do their uh, their sheaths, as well as you know making sure attention to detail is there, which the majority of stuff I've purchased from them before it is, but for mine, like I said, it's off about a quarter of an inch in keeping it nice and tight on there. The axe handle, as you can see here, is nice and straight. The grain is nice and straight. That's one huge thing you want to look for when you're looking for a great axe. You want to have straight grains. You don't want to have grains going to the side. You want to have them straight up and down. And for the most part, they are on this axe. And uh, good job, Wetterlings, on that. The price tag on this is steep. I'm thinking because it's probably a Les Stroud design and Les Stroud's name is attached to it, but you're looking at $145 for this axe. For this, I mean, you can go get a large hunting axe for under $100. So, you know, I mean, it's up to you what you want to do there, but, you know, I'm telling you, this axe really performs well. Like I said, I've read many reviews that people have had this axe, and they haven't mentioned the problem I had, so maybe I just got a one-off, because on top of that, the sheath doesn't work at all. So maybe I just got a one-off here, and, you know, I just got a, you know, one that just got goofed up for some reason, but... As far as the performance, even with it in that state, it was very, very well. It does what it was meant to do. It's an all-around great axe, in my opinion. It's very packable. You know, even though it has a 22-inch handle, it's still very packable. It doesn't have a huge, um, you know, axe head on it. It's very packable, and, you know, this definitely goes with me wherever I want to go. It's my go-to axe now after using it for a while now. I really like it. It gets the job done. You might want something with an 18-inch handle, which this will do, and then I'll recommend that one, the Sweaterlings Large Hunting Axe. But if you're really just looking for an all-around champion that's going to help you in many different ways, this is definitely get the job done. Splitting, cutting, you know, hammering things in, knocking things down um, in a hammer-like manner, you know, fine tasks that you're looking to do. Um, this does everything, and it does it, you know, pretty much everything really well. So I definitely like this axe, minus those two downsides. I think um, you're not going to experience that with what I've seen with my past history with Wetterlings axes that I have. So I'm assuming those are just flukes. So I really like this. I wish the price tag would definitely be down around $120. Um, that's my opinion. And uh, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, great axe. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and let me know. If you have uh, a large hunting axe or anything Wetterlings, uh, specifically though this Bushman, go ahead and put it in the comments and uh, give your uh, your feedback and history with the Wetterlings axes and video response is always welcome and until next time, later.